guys, welcome to another video. Now, I feel good. I woke up, I did my morning stretches, I stretched out my legs, stretched out my lats, stretched out my arms, stretched out just everything. I just feel well rested and relaxed. I was able to go to sleep like around 11 o'clock, um, and that's good for me. I usually go to sleep around two o'clock editing videos, but I have a process now, and I've built up a level of consistency and a, and a schedule to where I'm able to knock out things really, really efficiently and a lot more quickly. You know, I spend my time in the gym, I come back, eat my meals, get do uh, answer emails, do some shoes, and then I'm editing a video like around 8.30, and then it, I finish editing around 10.30, so like I go to sleep like around, around 11 o'clock, and it just feels really, really good, and I feel well rested, and that's a big part of dieting. You have to have the training down, the nutrition down, and the rest. You have to make sure you're getting the amount of rest that you need, and I'm just really, really energetic today. I feel really good, I feel relaxed, and today's just gonna be the same old stuff, man. Gonna go work out, come back, eat my first meal around three o'clock, two o'clock, and then uh, do some shoes, ship the shoes out probably today, and then get to editing this video, and just, you just have to build up a build up a, a schedule, build up a routine, and stay consistent whenever it comes to dieting, because that's what your body wants, it wants consistency. So this is really good. This is very, very, very good. So today we're heading on to the gym. Now, I haven't eaten anything yet. Like once again, it's around 11 o'clock, in the afternoon, haven't eaten anything yet, so today's workout's gonna be fasted as usual. And I was looking at some things about intermittent fasting, and it's like, um, you know, you could have a sip of water here and there. I normally don't, I don't, nothing goes into my mouth. Like, <laughs> nothing, I, nothing goes into my mouth. No water, no food, nothing. But I heard there's like a certain rule to where you could have maybe like a cup of black coffee, but no sweeteners, no uh, creamers or anything like that. And you could also fit in another maybe 30, um, anything that has like 30 calories, anything around 30 cal calories, anything over doesn't really count and then you break your fast. So haven't eaten anything. My first meal, I'm playing at around two to three o'clock. So I'm super excited, have a lot of energy. Today's back and biceps. So let's head on to the gym. We're gonna kill it. <laughs> I won't forget this time, I bring in a change of shirts. I'm wearing a stringer, but whenever you work out at Alpha Elite, you're gonna have to have something to change into after the workout because you get too sweaty in there. So. This is my change of clothes. Sneaker shit, blind and smoking reefer bitch. Trying to get me slipping, but I'm on some wide receiver shit. Three chopper, six clips, three hoes, one yeah. one blood, double cut, yeah. minus uh, one buffing uh. shit. I think I'm gonna start doing a thing every video where I give like a name of a song that I'm listening to or maybe an album that I'm vibing to during the workout. So today's album of the Today's album of the day, I guess, is gonna be Maxo Cream's Retro Card Mixtape. It is amazing, like it's the soundtrack to my summer. I think like in, I forgot when it came out, but it was like around the time I was working out, we were doing football camps and stuff like that, and I remember it always be my song whenever I'm driving to um, the football field. So man, Maxo Card, remember guys, this is the mixtape, I'll have it going across the screen, but it's Maxo Cream's Retro Card. The mixtape goes hard. He's a local Houston rapper, and uh, he's actually he actually has a new mixtape dropping today, so super excited for that. He has about three, four mixtapes, but if you guys like him, check him out, bro. He goes hard, he goes real hard. Okay guys, so I'm gonna start my back and bicep workout. I'm just gonna have Rock Coast playing, I'm not gonna talk too much. I need to up the intensity, so I need to focus more on the workout than I do like getting angles and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of these clips, and just follow along as I do this back workout. I'll have everything like, post it as I'm doing it, so let's get it. I'm gonna do some commentary as you guys watch me go through this back workout. So guys, this was one of the best back workouts that I've had in a while. Now, back has always been a weak point for me in terms of connecting my muscle to my mind or my mind to my muscle, whatever you guys wanna say. But you guys were watching me do some underhand or reverse grip rows. It's a lot different from the dumbbell rows that you guys are normally accustomed to doing, but it feels great. So I'm gonna show you guys this raw set of me doing some T-bar rows.
Okay guys, so you guys just watched me do a drop set on T-Bar Rose. And sorry if I'm going a little bit fast, but these clips are rolling by pretty quickly. But anyways, drop sets are an amazing way to increase the intensity of the workout itself. So I did, I built up to four plates, then came back down and did about two drop sets, which created a crazy pump in my back. Next, we moved on to some under grip or reverse grip pull downs. I know I put five sets on the screen, but I actually did probably like eight to 10 sets of that particular exercise. And next we moved on to some seated cable rows. This was actually going to finish the back portion of this workout. So from the seated cable rows, we moved on to biceps. And whenever I do back and biceps or my back and bicep day, I tend to just do maybe four to five at most, five or four to five back movements and then two to three bicep movements with the bicep movements being kind of close to failure reps. The reason I do so little for my biceps on my back and bicep day is because when, you know, whenever I work out back, my biceps tend to get fatigued. So whenever I reach that point to where my biceps are really fatigued, I just finish them off whenever I get to the end of the workout. So I just throw them in maybe two movements, like I said earlier. So we finish it off with some alternating dumbbell curls and some rope hammer curls. So that's gonna do it for this commentary. There's gonna be some posing in the next following clips. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. Looking thick. See that spasm right there? It's like Spasm. spasming. Spasm. Why, are you, why is your arm shaking? All right, let me get a picture and then I need to do cardio. <laughs> this is how we get pictures for the, for the gram. <laughs> we got Nadeem here too. Say what's up, bro. What's up, what's up guys? All right, what's happening guys? So it is nighttime. I've already eaten dinner. I ate my first meal of the day earlier this afternoon after I finished my workout and I've been drawing on some fans. But before I end this video, I kind of want to talk to you guys about some dieting tips and tips that have really helped me um, adapt to this prep life. So a lot of you guys ask, how am I so happy on prep? Like you see a lot of people prepping and they're like, kind of like, you know, depressed and they're not feeling it, or maybe they're always complaining about hunger. And I'm just gonna describe some of the stuff that I do in order to make prep life a little a little more easier for myself. So first of all, would be I mean the biggest thing is intermittent fasting, of course. The fact that I don't eat until later into the afternoon. I have a small feeding window, so I'm able to fit in my macros way later into the day, but I do understand that not everyone is capable of doing that. Some people need breakfast in the morning. Some people need that first meal in order to give them energy in the morning, and I completely understand that. So I'm gonna kind of move that to the side and explain some other stuff that I like to do. So I think one of the biggest things is uh, your water intake and how you drink your water, how and when you drink your water. So whenever you're cutting, it is important that you get enough water into your diet, like how much fluids are you taking in? And for the most part, you're supposed to get a full gallon of water, or at least three, uh, three fourths of a gallon of water. So a lot of people just kind of like to chug their water and they pick and choose when they want to drink the water. What I found helps and what helps a lot is while you're eating, make sure you're drinking your water. So let's say you have small meals throughout the day, make sure you get in a good amount of water with that small meal, with that small meal, because what's gonna happen is that that water is gonna fill up your stomach. Your stomach's gonna get filled up with water and that's gonna send signals to your brain, letting you know that, hey, you're full for right now. So when that, that small meal mixed in with water becomes a legit full meal, because a lot of times I'll be eating, I'll eat a small meal and then like, I won't drink any water, or I'll even eat a big meal and I won't drink any water, I'm hungry. But the moment I start drinking water, 
I'm not hungry at all. I'm actually pretty full and I get bloated, which is a good thing because I'm not gonna be hungry anymore throughout the day. But water intake, when you drink your water is very, very important. I've noticed that really helps me throughout this prep. Like whenever I'm eating my meals, I make sure I drink about not half a gallon, but close to half a gallon with each meal that I eat. So I'll eat my first meal of the day and drink about half a gallon and I'm just full. I'm completely full. And that lasts me all the way a couple hours until whenever it's time to eat my dinner. Now another tip, another little tip, and I, like it's so, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but like I never even thought about that. And that's just vegetables, eating vegetables. Vegetables are very low calorie, uh, very, very low in calories. And you're able to eat that in volumes. When you're able to eat that in volume, sometimes that, I mean, that helps. Like broccoli is, um, you know, three servings of broccoli is only nine, gra uh, nine grams of carbs. So if you're on a low carb diet, re like maybe replace your rice with some broccoli and that's gonna fill you up too. Like broccoli is really good. Um, spare, like just different, different vegetables, man. You're able to eat that in volume. Salads, throwing in salads, Make sure you get your greens. Like sometimes it's just about chewing something and have something in your mouth to chew over and over again. Salads are another great thing. It's only 15 grams for a full bag of salad. Like that's that's pretty good. And you just get to like just eat that with some Walden Farms, uh, some Walden Farms salad dressing, and that's just like a good simple little meal right there that's gonna probably fill up just because of volume alone. And it's a lot of it for very low calories. Okay guys, so those little tips, those little tips have gone a long way in making this prep easy for me. Now once again, intermittent fasting does play a big role just because I don't eat until like three, four o'clock in the afternoon and it allows me to save all my macros to fit a small feeding window. But those other tips really, really, really do help. The water intake and the vegetables and just like, just implementing those things have really helped me through this prep. So this video is coming to end, guys. Hope you guys were able to learn something from those little tips that I gave you. If you guys like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Get better today. I'm out.